Hi everyone, it's Tina on Phenomenal Beauty. So yes, finally doing the overdue review of the Wayne Goss brushes. So I do have the original set, which is the eight face and eye brushes, and what I'm gonna call brush number nine, which is the holiday brush, or it was, I think, the limited edition Christmas brush. I don't think it's limited edition anymore though. Uh, the reason I'm saying original is because there are the two new sets coming out, which I'll link the details down below on Beautylish. Now I'm sure you've seen them, but the face set comprises of six brushes and then the eye set is five brushes. So it would range from brush number 10 up to brush number 20, I believe. Now I actually got all of these uh, on lovemakeup.co.uk, which I'll link down below. In afterthought, I could have got them through Beautylish through my US postal address or something. Ah, oh, well, what I'll do is I'll put the prices I paid in pounds down below for each brush. So the details are down there and I might try and get the other sets through Beautylish if I, if I can. We shall see. Anyway, to these brushes. Just a quick overview of the actual brush itself. So they're very sleek. They definitely look luxurious and they feel and they feel great. They're very, very soft. But the handles are wood, so they're hornbeam wood or shied. And then you have a brass ferrule, but you can see it's all black. And then these are all natural bristles. Now they say that they don't cut them um, after they've put them in, so they are sort of sculpted to that sort of, that shape for whatever brush they're in. Um, so they're not cut afterwards, which means they're not, have those sort of harsh edges. So they are definitely what I would call silky soft. Uh, they do say 100% cruelty free. I'm not sure. I'm not going to get into that sort of argument. I don't know how they can have the 100% cruelty free here. Well, that's what they're stating on the site. And they're all handcrafted in Kumano, Japan. Um, and obviously financed by Wayne Goss. Now, what I do like is that each brush is numbered. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple. One to eight for the first set. And they've got the little number on there. Um, and then they have Wayne Goss. Well, they used to have Wayne Goss um, on the other side. Unfortunately, they've sort of worn off as do with a lot of brushes, you know, I think MAC, um, my Haku Hodu brushes and that eventually wear off. I just wish, it's just in general, that they could maybe somehow um, engrave the actual ferrules themselves. Since typically on long handled or, you know, handled brushes, you, you sort of, the wear is down there when you're sort of holding them or storing them or etc. If they could sort of engrave it into the actual ferrule would be nice, but I don't know. Anyway to the actual brushes themselves. Now, I'm gonna start with number one. And I'm actually, this is the face brush or foundation brush. Now, I'm very glad I waited to do the review. I was all set to do it in January and I'm, I am very relieved I didn't do it because I have actually changed my opinion on this particular brush. Was it was sort of one that I was yeah about, yeah about, because they are quite broad and pricey, but in comparison to what we pay in Australia for MAC brushes, they're not that pricey. But I had this brush, and this is a Haku Hodu brush, and again, you know, these are sort of, you know, made in Japan, so they, I don't know if they're by the same sort of thing, I'm not going to say, but you can see they're very similar. This obviously is a larger brush, I'll put the model down below what it is. But you can even see the actual detailing is very much the same, even how they have the ferrule, apart from the colour, it's, it's very similar. But this one is what I was using for my liquid foundation. It buffed really well. It's, it's like a stippling brush, but with, with the angles. You can see the different length bristles. And I was happy with this. I was very much more happy with this one. When I used this one, it was great for little detailing, like I would use for little small stippling brushes. And this is my Dallum one. Again, I'll put any uh, brush details down below that I show. But it felt like, to be really honest, it felt like I was trying to paint a house with a small detailing brush. You know, one that you would use on a window saw. I was trying to paint the whole, brush, uh, whole house with that. That's what it sort of felt like. Um, and using this just felt better, more comfortable, it felt right. I felt I could get the job done quicker, like I wasn't sort of doing these tiny little buffing, which I don't know. That's sort of how I felt, that's to be honest. So personally, I was okay with this brush. It did the job, it washes like a dream, it's still so soft. I've really broken these brushes and I've used every type of shampoo I would normally use or cleanser, spot cleanser, I've even used that SARS laundry soap, which I'll link down below um, my brush washing post. But I really went mad on them and beautiful. I haven't actually really noticed much shedding with this one. I think a couple around the sort of edges because I was a little bit harsh with them. You, you wouldn't be as harsh as I would uh, with them, but I was really trying to get, you know, get a real honest sort of view on them. But you can see it's sort of 
splayed out a little bit on the side because I wasn't as gentle as what I could be when you know drying them and all that but I just really wanted to see how they would stand up to the test but you know it went fine just had a few um, come out of there but working on the face working in the liquids not a problem the reason I was very happy that I waited as you can see, is that you can see unfortunately unfortunately I have quite a large surface area to work with what I mean is so here I have quite I have a large area so I can, re I can actually use this to get around there and I have the chin you know I've got a lot of sort of length there well not long but I've got you know what I can say and here and here and everywhere pretty much I don't have a low hairline I don't have like a very narrow um, a portion under here so for me this made more sense and all of my other you know flat top kabuki brushes that I use it made more sense for me to sort of do that now because I incorporated it into my kit, I was using it on lots of different people's faces when I've been practicing at home, practicing in the class, even on my husband. I know, don't laugh, but he's very blunt about sort of what was on his face because he, he's, uh, he's never had any practice with makeup brushes on his face. Why would he? But um, these are all being softer on me. He hasn't had a complaint. He likes these brushes. And everyone I've worked with and really harassed them in the class. How does that feel? How does that feel? How does that feel? Not a complaint. Very soft. They work well, um, even just these brushes, the other face brushes, they work well with cream and powder. No problem. But this one, I had an ah oh moment. I had a moment of clarity in the class. <laughs> because some people I've worked on have very tiny, almost, you know, very, very tiny spaces under here. And something like this was much better sort of for working around their face. And they've got much smaller, much finer sort of uh, surface areas. Hardly any hair here, here. Had people with very sort of low hairlines here and obviously different shaped faces and all that. And this made much more sense. Th this would be like I'm trying to attack their face unnecessarily. Like, you know, and obviously you can use a flat um, foundation brush. But this was much, much better, much better for working around those faces and those little details in that. And I could sort of do both. I could do the concealing and you know, all that sort of stuff with this, clean it in between because they, yeah, they honestly, because they're natural bristles, they clean a lot better when you're doing a quick spot clean. And I could do maybe cream, um, what am I trying to say? I could do um, sort of touch ups, I could do uh, liquid blush, cream blush and all that made much more sense than this big one. Because unlike other brushes, as you know, this because of this I can't sort of do that to get in around those areas it makes more sense with something like this and I had oh so this is much better so this is great this is going to live happily in my kit glad I paid the price for it not a problem it's going to get the, the wear and use out of it as well obviously if you you sort of maybe for a personal brush and you're thinking oh look it's I like these larger brushes fine go for that you can buy them individually but it is cheaper to get them in, in the sets wherever you get them from but yeah, that was much better. So I'm very happy with that. And it, like I said, it changed my opinion of that brush quite a bit. Because like, he did say that you could, if you were, you know, you could only afford a certain amount. And he knows that they are quite, you know, pricey in comparison. Because I've got e.l.f. brushes, you know, and they're a couple of dollars a piece. I love them. I love them. And they're fine. You know, they're great. I use those too. But, you know, you could, you know, either get the whole set and use that as your set to last for years. Or if you're doing, you know, you're, you're maybe a makeup artist or someone like me just starting out. It'd be fine to have as your original kit or, because you could sort of use them so many different ways. For me, I don't want just eight brushes. I want a lot more, which is what I'm doing. So it works really well. They all work happily in my kit and they're going to stay in there. So I'm going to get the money's worth out of them. Uh, the next brush is number two. Sorry I spent so long on that one, but I really ha felt it had to have a, a justified review on that one. But this one is number two. It's the, and obviously a little, little brush. And this one you can use many different ways. You can use it for blush. It should be great on you know, you know smaller surface areas. <laughs> you can use it for highlighting. You can use it to sort of set powder under the eye area even. Uh, and lots of different ways. Contouring even. Not a problem, which is what I've used it for. And you can see, here's my Haku Hodu one. Here is my Wang Goss one. They are twins that were separated at birth. <laughs> they honestly look. If this was black, the Haku Hodu one was black. They would. It'd be pretty much hard to tell them apart, except for I know this one. As you can see, I've been very rough with this brush. It sort of splayed out a little bit when I did um, the drying in that, but I did that on purpose because I just wanted to see how they stood up. But you know, if I shape it a little bit more a little bit gentler on it they will look the same it's got a little bit of fluff on it i've been 
I did a bit of a spot cleanse as well before they went onto camera. I touched them, <laughs> but yeah, they worked really, really well. And honestly, though, these are interchangeable, but these are expensive as well. So don't get me wrong. So I could use either one, and they they actually change in my kit for that. Sometimes I have the two if I know I'm going to be using a lot of uh, do a lot of detailing, highlighting, or powdering, or whatever, even for cream. You know, I can use these rather than spot cleansing them. I also have a Sigma brush. This is the F35, which is, I think, the old numbering, the tapered highlighter. And look at this. But it looks very, very similar. Except this is a little bit thicker, the actual handle. As you can see, these taper down the bottom. If I can get in shot a little bit better. As what you can say is the Wayne Goss and Hakuhodo are more elegant looking than this one. But they're pretty, pretty similar. As far as the quality, these do feel a little bit rougher. They do, but I've had this brush for years. I've had this in one of my original Sigma brushes. And I've been just as rough with this one, as you can see. But it is a bit poofy. It hasn't held a shape as well. And it's not as finely uh, tapered. Hopefully you can see that. And that's just pretty much how it looked like when I first got it. It wasn't as finely tapered as that one but they do all the same job I'm not saying one is necessarily better than the other uh, for the price and this would be a little bit cheaper obviously it's cheaper than these either of these two brushes does the same job so I'm saying you know if you, if you just want a similar brush that is fine that Sigma one I'm sure there's other different brushes out there on the market that are very similar for me though I like the the feel of these these feel a little bit more sturdier than my Sigma brushes over time they've worn they've gotten a little bit looser in the ferrule this one's still very fine very good but I just like I just like these better. I like the look of them, the feel of them. They're much more comfortable to sort of to, to hold in the hand. But this will be in my personal collection. I use this on myself. And these two lovely doublies will be in my kit. Aren't they lucky to get to work with on? But they you know, I feel like I'll get my money's worth out of it having it in there. So they, they stay there. Now the next three are actually eye brushes, but like he was saying, you can use them. For different things they don't have to be locked into that description but there is three four and five and they pretty much run from large medium and small oops as you can see so the handles of these two the three and four are fairly similar they're just slightly a little bit smaller around the ferrule and same with this one it's just a, it's a little bit narrower obviously to, to compensate for the the size of the bristles now this one you can use for the crease so sort of, you know blending um, out uh, shadows on the crease area you can even use this one because it's a little bit uh, finer or more tapered and even this one it just depends on the the size of the eye and I've found when I've been working on different people um, that I've been using them for different things like this might be the large brush on someone's eye whereas this one on mine is fine but because my eyes are a little bit hooded sometimes I like this one and this one a little bit better you can even use this one for more detailing um, like if you're doing a V uh, so use this to smoke it out or you might use these ones so you're not really like I said set in those sort of things it just depends on the shape of the eye if it's more hooded sort of what you're wanting to do and the placement so these have worked well in the class they've been definitely ones that I go for and because they're so soft they blend so very very well but they also pick up uh, a good amount of product as well being the natural being the natural bristles and I feel they sort of dispense it a little bit better I also had uh, varying responses on some of the other brushes that I have um, that might be a little bit I suppose harsher on the eye a little bit more spiky but they are quite good for uh, sort of the liquid or the creams as well because they need to be a little bit firmer to sort of work it in but sometimes I find that they're a little bit too too much for some people as well so these are great they still do cream and all that quite as well so I've been very happy with these ones again though the price you might be mm, it just depends what you want them for I will get my use out of them uh, the next one is brush number six, and this one you can use. I think it's I think it's labelled as a blending brush, I believe. But it's pretty it's pretty similar. Like this is number three, which was that other one. And just as far as the handle, it's very much similar. But you can see it's it's pinched here. Hopefully you can see that. So that one is great. You I mean even if you just want to place like pat product on the eye so maybe you want to set your um, you, you've smoked out your gel eyeliner all over the lid and then you want to sort of set it or you want to do something this is good for placing it it's great for blending um, in the in the crease 
for doing contour you can even it just depends on the shape of the eye and everything like I said you can use this interchangeably these ones which is the number where are we number four you might want to sort of set um, powder around the eye or you could use this one it depends sort of what you want and even brush number five you can use that to sort of get your highlighter in the corner of the eye depending on what you want to do so these have been great I've been using them all interchangeably as well and even if you want to contour around the nose area you could do it with this one which is the number six brush uh, or even this one it just sort of depends on how large <laughs> the area is. Next two you got um, seven and eight but this one is the lip brush and it's more, I don't know, it's, it's called an old school one, but you know, you've obviously got other lip brushes that look more like this one, but a little bit sort of firmer. It just sort of depends what you want. But this one, as you can see, it's very fine. And it's just good for really working around the lip area and, and you know, all of that sort of stuff. But you can also use it on the on the eye. Like you might want to smoke out your, um, your gel liner, I don't know, or your pencil. You can sort of work it around the eye area as well. Obviously not at the same time, but you can, you can use that. And I have used it for that. And even number eight, which is your precision brush. Like very fine detail, as you can see, it's, it's tiny. So as this one's rounded and it's longer. This one is flat across. Hopefully you can see that. And it's very very fine so this has also been really great you can apply liquid eyeliner and I've tried I've tried that as well again it depends on the eye shape and the consistency of the liquid you're working with and what you sort of want to achieve so it's been great for that I've even used it to on the um, use another brush for the fine detailing of the gel eyeliner and I've used this to pat over um, you know eyeshadow to set it so I've, I've done that you know black eyeshadow over the black gel eyeliner sort of what I've done as well so it's fine for that so these are great or um, if you want to do the um, smudge out under there or this one it just depends on sort of what you want and sort of again the area you've got to work with or play with so yeah these these have been actually good and I've even used yeah this one I've used as a lip brush you think what it's so tiny there are people with the finest pencil thin lips um, out there and this was much but this I just felt like I was I'm gonna attack your lips this was much better <laughs> This is much better, believe me. So, um, yeah, I've been very, very happy with those brushes. Like I said, most of them are going to be, though, living happily in my kit. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is I'll have my brushes for my kit, which I'll interchange with other ones that I've got. Obviously, I've got ones drying in that. They're, they're happily. And I've got, believe me, I've got more than enough, as I'm sure you've seen, for my personal use. And more, more, more than enough. Now, the next one, or the last one, is brush number, I'm going to say number nine. And it's that holiday brush. It's a beautiful brush. It's actually probably my favorite brush. Um, whereas number two, you can see it's pretty much it's it's you know grandfather and the you know the the teenager. <laughs> it's much more sort of bigger, but it is like if this one grew up and pff, this is what it would look like. But very very similar. But this one I use more for you know your your highlighter powder and all more fine details depending on on what I want. This one I've also used for blush. It's great on my size face. Um, you know, bleeding out, contouring, um, a prime a, a bronzer as well. It sort of depends what I want. This has been fine. Or even you know like setting powder. It's been great for that because it just it's so soft and so fluffy. I don't know if that makes sense. But still firm enough, so it's 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 great to sort of apply a range of different powders as well because it is firm enough to sort of do that. And I've been pretty mean on how I've washed it, so but you can see it's it's good. That's how it should be. That's how you ch should check your brushes when you clean them. Don't just go, oh yeah, that looks clean. Get in there, have a look. Is it clean? I can't see any powder or anything in there. Get in there, get in the bristles. Is it clean? Is it clean down deep in the brush? It's clean. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's pretty much squashed up Sigma brush. Having a bad hair day today. This is the F25 tapered edge. Yeah, no tapered face, tapered edge. It sounds like a um, you know rock video. But oh, I'm so sorry, Sigma. And look, it do, honestly, it it doesn't look that bad. You know, it does not look that bad. It's just had a you know, it's had a rough night. Um, but there is the obviously the Wayne Goss and that one. So this these are not generally longer handled. As you can see, which is quite good too. If you if you have limited space, especially in your kit, you don't want all of these long handled brushes in your kit. So they kind of work well as you know having them in there with a slightly shorter handle. So it is a good size. So he, he kind of you can tell he put a lot of thought into what he was doing, even though they are pretty much like the Hakuhodu. 
uh, but yeah so these are a little bit more bulkier in the handle and a little bit longer but this is worn just as well I have had a bit of shedding issues with this lately I've had this for I don't know if it could be three years or more, more or less it's it's had a good run in and this is one of the brushes I used the most it was until this one joined me so this is one I'm actually using personally because I just don't want to let it go into my kit I love this brush um, but yeah these generally do the same thing worked sort of well but this I mean I'm, I'm hoping this will stand the test of time so I'll feel like I'll be getting my investment worth again I will if anything does happen to these brushes I will come and tell you I mean I paid my money for these brushes so I will be as honest as I possibly can so yeah this works just as well but this is just much more elegant I am biased towards this brush can you not tell I'm so sorry Sigma but yeah I do I do like this one I feel the quality is is there but the like I said these stand the test of time that have done well but this is I don't know if you can hear that it's very loose in here it's 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 been used a lot so it's very it's much looser in here I can hear even when I'm trying to clean or use it it's like you can hear it sort of wobbling around and, and you can see it so these are I think that's half the reason why slowly I'm getting more um, losing more hair from this brush it's suffering hair losses because <laughs> but these are still very sturdy and very firm but they're still very new in the scheme of my brushes Anyway, that was my very long-winded uh, little post. So I do apologize it was so long, but I just felt like I wanted to say all that. And you know me, for a while I sort of ramble, I go on, but I love my brushes. I have a lot of brushes, but I enjoy using them. And now with the course and, and hopefully maybe doing things professionally one, one day, they will all get used. They will all definitely get used. Um, so no fear of that. And then to summarize, do I generally feel I've got my money's worth? Yes, I do, but like I said, I'm using them in the kit. If I was just using them for personal use, I also would say that I, I would, because I mean, I went out and, and spent money, I thought about it before I did, on the Haku Hoda ones, which are very, very similar, like I said. I thought about it, and I love brushes, and I know they'll get the use out of it. So for me, it's a happy purchase. As far as if you are, you know, obviously on a tight budget, and maybe you're saving up, and you can only afford... Um, a couple of brushes of them or a what do I call it um, or you're gonna splash out and get the set but that will be your brushes for years and years and years I don't know I'd, I'd have to generally think about that because the, the, the two, if I could only pick a couple of brushes it would definitely be this one the holiday brush but that is very pricey and out of the comparison to all the brushes um, I would probably skip on all of the eye and the lip brush. Why? Because for what they are individually, for what they're priced individually, I know you can get ones just as good, Royal Land Nicole, Delon, etc. and all that. I, I would probably skip on those. And you could be like, how could you? For me, they're going to get their money's worth though. They're going in my kit. Um, but I would definitely get this one. As far as the, the face brush, if you've got a very petite face or if you're happy to sort of you know work it around go for it this is a great foundation brush great foundation brush if you're like me and you just love the the, the larger ones um, to sort of do on your face I've got oh, they're all in the wash go out and spend the money on that you can get ones for half half the amount of price but if you want to do the Hakuhoda one go for that wider one so this is just really just depends on what you want you've really got to think about it uh, but I would, I would, I love this one. It's one that you can use so many different ways. You can even use it for your face powder. There's no problem with that because you can sort of work it around like that. So you can do it that way. Fan brush, contouring brush, blush brush, highlighting brush. It's got lots of different uses. Oh, I've got a little bit of my um, my blush, blush and foundation left over, and I've been using. Oh, squish your hue your hue color so you've done your sort of eyeshadow it's just so, so many different ways you can use this brush I think it's you know you'll get your money's worth this with this one if maybe you've got a much more petite face and you think oh look you can't I mean you can sort of interchange it this though putting on face powder was gonna be quite you know it's gonna take you a while but you could sort of do your fan brush your highlighting your contouring your buffing you can do you can sort of do that so maybe you just want to try that one that's fine but the, I mean, these two you could sort of use, but this one is for your overall face. I would, I would recommend it. 
um yeah so those are sort of my my picks just sort of those three and just sort of depending on what you want to achieve um as well and the other ones you could probably leave it depends so if you're a big eyeshadow person and a lip person forget these then you can use your other brushes go for all of these or go for the ones that you want out of here or you might want to wait and get the eye set that's coming out so have a look through there because uh, I know there's a, you know, more tapered ones in that one and there's a fan brush even in the new face set. So have a look through all of those ones. Just sort of depends what you really want. But those are my personal picks. Um, and if you're a big eyeshadow person, which you know I'm not. You know I'm not if you've been watching me. So that's for why I wouldn't for personal use go for any of these ones. Anyway, long winded. It's so long winded. It's gone over two memory cards. <laughs> um... And I've heard my family have a personal meltdown in, in the background because I've been in here doing this. But it's that's sort of how I feel. I, I want to put as much detail as I can genuinely put in it, as I can possibly put in it. Because I've paid the money. I know they're not cheap. And I want to give you as much of my, you know, honest opinion as I can. Okay, thank you so much for watching.